No need to fade. <laughs> and then we'll go right to left, actually. You I'm Dan, I play bass. I'm Daz, play guitar and vocals. I'm Paul and I play the drums. Aha! Sorry, what do you the do The drums. <laughs> the I, drums. I, I, the guitar and vocals. Tell us about yourselves. But Paul grew up listening to sort of the background music in pornos. <laughs> um, that sort of sleazy, you know... Bluesy, <laughs> funky, <laughs> slow <laughs> funky, sleazy. Um, <laughs> Blues, <laughs> blues, blues, more blues. Blues, sleazy blues, seventies sort of rock and roll American swamp, sleazy kind of stuff, and and a bit more blues and British blues. More importantly, the early sort of era of like the Cream and Hendrix coming over and just just that developing sound that came out of Britain in the sort of late sixties, early seventies. Yeah. Mad funk, <laughs> acid jazz. Yeah. Um, we're all into similar music. If you see me walking down the street, please don't say a word. Where'd you get around? What sort of venues you're playing in Birmingham? How'd you, how'd you find them? Every venue in Birmingham, we, we've done it to death. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's, it's one of them sort of places where you, you, you do the gigs, you go back there, you do it again, you take your people, you rob your friends and family of money to watch you for half an hour. And... The promoters don't promote venues. Well, very few of them do. There's a couple of good ones coming through now. Um, but it, it's generally, it, it's geared up for the person on the door to take the money and let the bands entertain, lug the gear there and leave you with fuck all. Do you actually think that most promoters make money from, from small venues and, and small gigs? Well, the only, the only people that I can see making money from them is, is the promoter. Drive me. Your he's, paying, he's paying six pounds on the door and you don't even see a poster up in the venue. That's right. uh, with venues charging anywhere from 50 quid to 250 quid just to hide the room. And, and you know, the promoter can't split you a quid every no. time. That's, well, that's, yeah. that's the bigger venues where, you know, they're paying the same money and the same amount supplied by the venue. So like, you know, the ballroom, the new ballroom in Birmingham. And those sort of bigger venues where they're getting touring bands come through there, you, you can justify it there where there's a bigger fee on the door. But a lot of the bars that have been going for years, like the Flapper and like you know those kind of venues and, and the smaller pubs, where the landlords are basically just saying to a promoter, "There you go, use the room. We'll put somebody on the bar for you, and they make the money." And the, the bands are walking out there, having sort of slug the guts out, sat around for six hours waiting to play, and, and then not even getting a thank you. In the money! The yeah, biggest yeah. problem is, you know, we've been asked to go down to London and play London venues. Is, you know, the London promoters they want thirty tickets, cash up front, seven, seven, eight pound a ticket, yeah. And then when you've sold them thirty tickets, you can't expect thirty people to drive down uh, there. So they've got to get a coach, and, and then you have to book is, the coach. The thing is, you know, you get a band to go down to London. The thing because they're going to go down to London, they're going to get signed, and that's how it's going to happen. You let the labels come to you if you're causing a stir. And you're causing, you know, people are hearing about it. They'll, they'll come to you. That you'd have to go down chasing down to London for gigs. Okay, we're talking about us now. Yeah, we're talking about you. I mean, would you like to get outside? Ben, Paul. Though? Would you like to play outside the band? Would yeah. you want to tour? Yeah. Would you like to, to be yeah, able like to? to it, it, I'd like to. I, I think really what we could do if it's a good support slot for someone who's do quite well, and then we get like uh, exposure where people actually see how good we are, then uh, that's when it'll happen. You know. Yeah, we've done a few little live sort of recordings. Um, nothing really to shout about, just like little demo pieces sending out to get the gigs and what have you. And then recently, well, I say recently, it took about 18 months to get it sorted, which is just us dragging our feet. <laughs> They're recording down at Musoplex with Cy, uh, with the help of Andy, and just basically putting, EP, yeah. putting out a little four track EP of uh, some of our latest tunes, um, which has gone down really, really well live. And, and people's response to it is 
it's fucking yeah, it's the best stuff we've done. It's the best yeah. sounding stuff. We wanted to to capture what we feel like we are live, and I think we've done it here. Yeah. No, sound, when I bang it on, it still sounds energy. I bang it on, it sounds like live. You know what I mean? That's what we wanted. I don't want it to sound like. Yeah. The thing that we the thing that we always get told is playing live is is we're a free piece and we go out there and we sound like a six piece band. Gonna start a revolution. So if you've got any sort of short term, medium, long term goals, where do you want to get to? Carry on enjoying ourselves. If, if anything do, comes yeah. of it, that's the way. If you, if you don't so, enjoy what you do. Which it sounds like we don't enjoy what we do, but we do. No, we, we enjoy it, it. That's we, we love we, it very much. We, yeah, music it, every week. Sports that I do for us, yeah. you know. Yeah. Stuffing off this, we've sent out a load of them to labels anyway. So, you know, if we got a nice support slot, just do a little mini tour, you know, yeah. ten, 10 dates with a band, you know, jump in the back of a, jump in the back of a van and do it. <laughs> and uh, one last one then, if somebody couldn't wave a magic wand for you in, you know, in, in music and in Birmingham, what would you, what would make your day, what would actually help you to drive your band forward to where you want it to be? Uh, a really, really good manager with a fuckload of money <laughs> who's going to invest it into us, who, who's got contacts, and I think that, that's, that's the point where the industry's got is you, you, need, us, uh, you need money behind you to push you forward. Or just get us that slot. Yeah, it's, it's all about marketing and somebody's put you in the right place. Yeah. If we could get no. that festival support slot, then yeah. and then we could just. Or we could buy one like, of these lovely round, like corner, flat leather sofas. <laughs> Down the street, please don't say a word. Give me my name. You're calling me. I'm gonna start a revolution. So why do we walk the talk the the half the half the people that we are? We're kind of because we do a lot of gigs with dwarfs. Ha, 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 ha.